Hello and welcome to Star Citizen Sunday with me, Ryan, aka Sifu Messiah. Now this is a weekly show which covers everything from the world of Star Citizen. Everything I mentioned in this video can be found on the RSI website. There will be links in the description below if there's anything else you want to look at in further detail. Let's get on with it. So in this week's show, we have the usual 10 for the Chairman and Around the Verse. There is Devian Vorlik answering questions for you all. And also a cool post about how the healing will work in the FPS. So stay tuned. So as always, starting with 10 for the Chairman. Now this was, again, a very good post. Lots and lots of good questions. So I think I've included pretty much all of them, maybe minus one. Uh, he started by explaining how the getting drunk with the new hangar flight doesn't work. As we all probably know by now, you know, I'm sure any of you who have got the, the hangar flare for the drinks cabinet have tried drinking all the all the liquids, all the whiskies, to no prevail. So I think they're sorting that out sooner or later. Anyway, on with the question. So question one, how will players be put into cells on the Cutlass Blue Will they need to be inca incapacitated via restraints or cutscenes? So Chris Roberts explains that this is still to be figured out. It's not 100% down in design, but basically if you capture someone, then technically that player is removed. So if you are the player that's been captured, you will then, as soon as you're captured, maybe two minutes into it, you will be in the cell and then you'll leave the cell and go to prison or go to wherever you've been taken. But the person who captured you, say the bounty hunter, will still have a physical person in the cell, it just won't be you. So basically, you're not, you know, it's to stop boredom. If you get caught, you're going to be stuck in that cell for however long that guy decides to keep you there. So rather than spamming people in that way, they've done it this way. Um, he did say something about tractoring them in and then stunning them. But again, it's not 100% fleshed out. It needs to be looked at. So the next question, what role will the co-pilot play? And also the other seats that we see in multi-crewed ships, like for the Starfarer, for instance, we saw, I think, five seats in their cockpit. I think it's only a two-man needed to fly the thing. I mean, even one probably could, but you'll have to switch between things, and if you get attacked, you're screwed. Anyway, back to the question. So, what will the uh, co-pilots and other players have with the other seats? You know, if, if, there's a, if there's a pilot there, what will the other people be able to do? And Chris Roberts says the different seats will have split function. So bigger ships will have custom stations like engineering, weapons control, and comms. And obviously will be more effective the more players you have on board helping you out with that ship. I think there'll be, you know, you've got e-navigation. So someone will be plotting the course for you to go from one jump to the next jump. You know, how to get to a certain system. The pilot will obviously be flying this set course, which I expect if you've, plan you've plotted it, you'll send it to his screen. He'll see it and he'll know where to head. Communications will be basically hailing other ships, reporting to other players, stations, just basically communicating with everyone. But then you've got engineering. The engineers will sit or stay around the engine bay uh, and will repair things. So, you know, if, you get sh if you're in a battle and, I don't know, energy cells get exploded, you'll have to go down and repair them or swap them out. Again, it's not been fleshed out properly yet, so we don't know the actual details, but we know there is going to be an engineering mechanic, plus a repair mechanic, as we know with the new repair ship as well. Uh, weapons controls, I suppose, will just be deciding what weapons to use when, what ammo to use, because I expect there'll be different types of ammo. Lots to do there. Um, but there's also other... other things i think like the start of the uh, what do you call it reclaimer has nav beacons which you can send out to scan the area so that will probably be either weapons control or navigation seat where you'll have to have these devices to send them out there's going to be a lot to do on a multi-crew ship so if you're not the pilot if you just want to be the pilot you may be disappointed at first but i'm sure if you've got your hands into navigations or engineering you will really enjoy it i myself would like to take part in all the different aspects of, of manning different stations anyway um next question Will there be play styles, roles for scholars or diplomats? Maybe join a college, a library, you know, missions to study a topic or maybe retrieve a, re a relic. Very cool. It's like sort of the Skyrim Winterhold, is it? The, the, the college that they have there. That sort of idea, I suppose. And I think this is an interesting question because obviously everyone may think that, you know, well, not everyone, but a lot of people may see this game and think, oh, it's just about space combat. In fact, I've just been online and played in an Arena Commander battle against someone called Corvin, who is incredibly good. Uh, he had a Hornet and I was testing out the new 315P. And my God, he killed me like six times and I barely scratched him. I think I actually did kill him once, but that was because I drove into him. Sorry about that, it was a bit unfair. But anyway, um, Chris Roberts says that it's a bit too early 
to, to flesh out this, to say whether or not there'll be these sort of play schemes. He says there probably won't, there's no plans for diplomats, but you can search for relics. And we know this, like the Artemis, for instance, which we touched on last week. Off the subject of that, there are certain things like reporters. He's thinking of having in-system reporters. And I assume if they're going to pay these people, it'll be UEC rather than official money. Although it would be nice to have a proper job sitting here and playing Star Citizen as a reporter and being paid just to get information out to the PU, you know. It's going to be reporter tools. There's going to be advocacy tools. There's so much you can do. He did say that you can just exist in the Persistent Universe. You don't have to have a, like a specific job to do or a role to play. You just have. You can just be. You don't even have to enter into any combat. You can always just run, I suppose. <laughs> but anyway, he it says it's going to be down the road, things like diplomacy and sort of things like that. I don't know how much in depth it'll go, but saying that he has delivered everything that people tend to be asking for, so... You never know. Right, next question. So again, about the Moby Glass, will it be able to act as a communication device like text or verbal? Basically like a mobile phone. And Chris says, definitely used as like an instant messaging device where you can obviously text people straight off. Your friends maybe, I don't know if you can like holler down other people that you've you've met planet side. But obviously if you go on board a ship, it'll have its own communication system, which has its own signature systems as well. So you can probably pick up other people's transmissions. Um, and planet side, yes, definitely you will be able to use it to, to text people. He hasn't gone into whether or not you can use it as voice. Possibly. Um, I don't know how that'll work. So the next question, a very, very good question. Will cosmic events trigger na nationwide holidays, reactions, like, you know, citizen reactions, like in the real world? Uh, and if so, how will they tie into the economy or the culture, for example? And the answer we got was yes, definitely. They are planning on this cosmic events, basically, like comets coming down and destroying worlds. These are going to be used by the game masters, so the people who are creating the game creating storylines and they're going to use this to create things like famine where there'll be then a demand for food in this certain system or a disaster where you've got to ship out a population before the planet just explodes very awesome this it's it's literally how stories in world will work and again you know back to the last question about reporters you could be a reporter going down planet side reporting about the famine or reporting about this disaster that's happening and just seeing these huge ships come floating down npcs and players picking up all the population mainly npc population out of thought to get off this planet before it just explodes so yes there will be cosmic events that will trigger real events holidays i don't know if you'd celebrate maybe your world blowing up possibly but yeah so really cool question that i like that one very much so the next question is what I generally dream of or think of when I'm trying to get to sleep on a night time, um, which probably doesn't help. When salvaging derelicts, will we encounter unknown life forms on board? Now this is something that I have always wanted out of Star Citizen because if you are on your own and you're exploring or salvaging and you find this space station or derelict ship very much like Dead Space in that sense, you go on board, you realise there's something on board. Now. In traditional games, you try and fight it off and you'll just keep keep going deeper and deeper into the ship or the system, the station. And if you die, then you tend to respawn and just carry on. This will be so different now. It's more fear because you've got to worry about your, your health, your life, because if you lose a life, you can only, you only have so many lives. You don't, th if you see a creature in the distance and you're, you've managed to see him or you've had a fight and gotten away from him, you won't want to go in deeper on your own because you know for a fact that if there's more or if he did a lot of damage in the inst you know, as soon as you saw him, you're going to die if you go any further. So you've literally got to get out of there and call in the boys in a sense, you know, call in some help, which will play into a completely different game. It's, it is Dead Space, but multiplayer with, with, you know, more fear. Dead Space scared the shit out of me, but it, there are jump scares, you know, once you've got past the initial thing and or you died and you've respawned, you're calm again. This is going to be literally like you've got to fight for your life, you've got to hold up and hope that your crew will get in quick enough. Really cool, and Chris Roberts says yes, definitely, which is excellent. There'll be NPC alien creatures jumping down from the ceiling is something he said, in space and planet side. So if you land on a certain planet and there's aliens there, you know, they might be hostile. If you're wanting to take a space station on or a derelict ship and salvage it, you've got to be able to fight off some aliens. So that to me is my favorite question of this, this round. Uh, moving on. Will there be an FPS weapon showroom? Definitely, I think we have seen a picture of it before. I know Sandy put one on her Facebook page. You will have a showroom with personal equipment, weapons, items, clothing, like real shops, and you'll use your Moby Glass, he says. It won't be like traditional where you take it off the shelf, you go to the shop and you pay. You will scan it with your Moby Glass, pretty much like a QR code reader sort of thing, I suppose. 
and then you will buy it through that. So early next year, with the social mod, we should be seeing this sort of aspect of gameplay. Um, and also we saw a shop called Cubby Blast, which was basically a shop for weapons or equipment or clothes, you know. So yeah, definitely for that one. So the next question, how will owners of the Cutlass Red or the en Missing Endeavor, you know, the, the hospital type ships, make money? Will it be like payment once you've healed someone, basically? And this, again, explains a lot about how player and player interaction will work especially with the economy. There's a system in America which I've never heard of other than Chris telling me where if you want to take, you know, someone can hire out their car and themselves as a driver, like a taxi service, you get into their car, you pay them the equivalent of a taxi price and you get taken somewhere. Now there's a, there's a rating system for this where you can say whether or not that person was, you know, a nice person, nice to talk to, paid or didn't pay. You can rate them, basically, and then when someone else comes along and says, can I have a taxi, you can look at their rating on your phone and it'll say whether or not they were they tried to kill you or not. And so he's, Chris Roberts is going to use this system in the Persistent Universe. There'll be some sort of charge for services, a system for this. So basically, I'll heal you, you pay this credits. There'll be a job board and ratings, as we know. Whether or not you can bar to payment systems, I don't know. If you can set up the whole payment system, then if someone says, I'll pay you... 10,000 UBC for putting my, you know, fake limb on. You can be like, well, actually, I demand 20,000 or something. You know, you can you can probably batch somewhere on the way. And also, this will stop lying because obviously, with this rating system, you will see if they've if they're not a payer. And also, you won't be able to use the job board, Chris says, if you haven't paid until you settle that score. So you you may you you know you can say I'm not going to pay. Let's fight. And if the person says, I don't want to fight, then you can run off. You know, so it's it's sort of like, but then you won't be able to use job boards. So he's, he's figuring out, fleshing out the system of how it will stop this. Because there needs to be a punishment if you're not going to pay, basically. But yeah, there'll be maybe some price regulations, or maybe you can come with your own price. Because we don't want people going around saying, well, it's a million UEC if you want that. Because, you know, supply and demand and so forth. Anyway, so the next quest question ties into the different grades of fuel, you know, like petrol and so forth. Whether or not there'll be different grades of it, will there be jump fuel? And Chris Robert says, yes, not maybe basic octanes, but boost fuel will be different to, like, general fuel. And then you'll have your thruster fuel, which might be different to every other fuel. And there may be different grades of boost fuel, which you can have, like, the, the, the main normal sort of general price boost octane and then you can have the really high grade which you would tend to put in sports cars and, and stuff like that um uh, you know and, and the price differences will change as well depending on the type of fuel boost will pro probably most likely be the most expensive whereas general fuel obviously will just be a to b sort of fuel there, it says there will be refining equipment for bases ships um where you can make premium boost so you collect up some fuel from a gas giant you combine that with something else that will make boost or premium fuel all on ship you know you refine it yourself and then you can sell it there might be a lot of money in that you know because they did say that sort of boost fuel will be hard to find so you could have your own fuel system uh, fuel business sorry so that was it for 10 for the for 10 for the chairman if, tell me if you've got any questions or if you've you've got any thoughts on that i personally think those questions were magnificent it's nice to see so many gameplay elements in the, in the questions rather than just what's your favorite ship sort of thing but yeah Okay, so in Around the Verse number 21, again, Sandy and Ben, there was uh, a new events list for 2015. I think it's up there now. I'll try and find it and put it in the, in the uh, links below so you can plan your year ahead. But there will be more to come, apparently. So news Around the Verse, starting with Arena Commander, the Drake ship's audio has been recorded. Each manufacturer, they explain, has different audio and different, obviously, look aesthetically. And it's very good because you can distinguish certain ships by the sound. And it'll be interesting. There's new missile types being prototyped. We saw an image in Sandy's Facebook page last week. I'll try and find it again. Of different missiles. AI turret and AI behavior continue improvements for version 1.0. So Squadron 42, zero G traversal animations are ongoing. Mocap request list for December shoot is has been generated and concept work has been started for the javelin, or the civilian javelin, should I say. So for the Persistent Universe, the Art Court Bartender is continued work in his little video, I'll put it up. They're testing friends and chat list systems which is very cool because then we can start talking to our mates. Uh, work continued for movement improvement. That's kind of a catchy line. Uh, ships. So, the Gladius received tweaks and damage system prototype. Avenger variants entered the concept phase. Carrick is receiving its finishing touches. And Art finished the Sucker Punch and Max 
zero or OXX 40 millimeter. They said there's going to be about four to six new weapons in Arena Commander almost ready. There'll be more for version 1.0. So keep hold of any money that you've got, UEC money, because you may be able to kit out your ship. I know for a fact I'm selling my M3A lasers because they are useless. <laughs> So, FPS. They have fixed a bug where you would have insta-death by running into a non-moving ship. So basically, if you have your ship stuck there and you run into it, you just die. I'm glad they've fixed that. The prone has been implemented and the animations have begun, which is excellent. I'm glad they're putting prone in, as I've said. And mag boots are being improved. Don't know what they mean by that. It's always good to improve stuff. So then we went to the customer services and the dog tags have been shipped. So if you order dog tags, you will now they'll be on the way, just in time for Christmas. And the Connie models are back, so if you missed out on one, you can get one now. I think they're $125. So, Bug Smashers with Mark Bent. Yeah, this is to do with asteroids and them having no collision physics to them, so you can literally fly straight through them. If you found that in Arena Commander, they're fixing that. I don't think I've seen it anywhere in, in Arena Commander, but it must be there if they're fixing it. Very in-depth, as always, with, with Mark Bent. If that's something you're uh, interested in learning about, check him out again. The sneak peek this, this week is the missiles are uh, underneath one of the wings of a ship. I don't know what ship it is. Could be the Retaliator, I don't know. I don't want to speculate too much because I'm sure I'll be wrong anyway, but obviously you can you can see it or you've seen it depending on how well I've timed this. So Mark Lewis with the most valuable post from Grrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
instances you can travel drag him from his from the shoulder or you can drag him from your from his feet so if you are dragging someone you cannot fire you cannot do anything other than drag this person person being dragged depending on his injuries may be able to shoot so if he's still able to hold a gun and he's not incapacitated he can still shoot while he's being dragged so he will be your <laughs> shield in a, in a sense your protection and then obviously once you get him to safety then you will have to work on him obviously if if something is ruined you cannot do anything to it if something is damaged then you can heal them to a certain point but it will still have an effect on the player like he'll feel pain your screen will go a bit blurry you know if if um if it gets too much and if it's the legs they'll obviously fall to the ground and crawl um hurt is basically you can you can heal them they can walk they can you know they can, they can aim but they'll have problems if it's one of the arms that have been shot if you've shot in your left arm and you've still got your right arm you and you're right-handed you can fire single handed weapons like handguns if your one arm is and you're trying to fire a, a like a multiple handgun like an assault rifle you won't be able to your aim will be too bad so you'll have to use your your, your, your handgun now if you're healing someone in the fps you will only heal them to a certain degree you will not fully heal them in order to get fully healed they need to be in a med bay so you can heal someone who's taken a shot or maybe some shrapnel to a point where they're still combat efficient but once that battle is over they need to get out of there and they need to get repaired also there is bleeding out which we see in a few games like operation flashpoint or armor i think maybe do it um where if you get shot then that you will bleed from that limb or the area and you need to get patched up before you completely bleed out now one scrape may call cause a, a slow bleeding a bullet hole somewhere will probably cause a bigger bleeding and then obviously a loss of a limb will have immense bleeding and you will be pretty much unable to do anything until you get that sorted and even then you might not be able to do much anyway so there are medical devices we, there's a picture of one up either now or whenever you know uh, as you know i'm not that organized which is the dynapack now this is made by a company called cure life and it's it looks like a personal you know one one spray one capsule spray is one person or maybe there's a multiple purpose use in that spray can and then you swap it out and have another one really nice idea and obviously once there'll probably be more different ones more in depth ones when the game gets fully fleshed and obviously if if that isn't capable of healing anyone you've got to get onto the onto the ship like the cutlass red or the misc endeavor for example so this post is very cool i've only touched on it briefly even though i have spent a good five minutes talking about it there is much more that that, that explains how it works much more to see i would suggest reading it because this is cool and it's again it's going to change the whole dynamic of is that a word of playing in the fps shooting aspect so also this week there was a new fan spotlight which is the videos volume three there's a galactic guide for the null system kaizen which is to do with market breakdown it's i've not read that yet but it's, it sounds like an interesting post there's a new law builder it has details of clothing examples clothing companies variations of different items you can pick up really nice post really in fiction uh, from from ourselves from the community there's a new jump point available for all you subscribers which i've read it it goes into the orbital platform the station that we saw from the fps demo and how they built that up from nothing to what it was. Really cool post. It also mentions about Gold Horizon, the people who make that specific type. You can test drive the 300 series, the Origin 300 series, and I've been giving it a go. Very nice ships, and I love the whole, you know, the, the, the luxurious look, the leathery type padded interior. Really nice, but I still like my Aurora, I must say. As I said, mentioned before, there's $10 treats, which if you've seen Sa the Sandy Gardner's Facebook, you'll see she has these little green men, which are spacesuits men, you know, the uh, EVA things that we've seen in the game. I've picked up one. I don't know why. My girlfriend doesn't have a clue why I've bought it, and I'm just going to have it on my shelves, and it'll inspire me to play the game more, which is not necessary also for ten dollars was the pack of playing cards and notebook and i've been wanting that for ages but i've never brought myself to pay 19.99 for them but now the ten dollars christmas present good old stocking filler i've picked one up and i will not use it i will have it forever it'll be a collector's item i'm an antique dealer, so i know these things will be worth a lot of money later on in life anyway there's a new anniversary sale as well as i said before this explains why we have smashed these funding goals we are now currently at 62 million. I think we're heading for 63 million. We're already halfway there. So now you can pick up again the Super Hornet, the Banu Merchantman, the Caterpillar, which would probably be my choice, I think. I love the Caterpillar. It looks very cool. The Retaliator, the Starfarer, the Gladiator, if I haven't mentioned that already, and the Jean Catul or Cathu Al. So if you've been one of those ships and you've not been able to get one, now is your chance. 
they are hundreds of dollars, but still, if you've got the money, why not? Now also, there was some extra little bits available. For $5, you can pick up the, the, the Model 2 Arclight Sidearm, or the UEE Environmental Coat, or some advocacy tools, like mentioned in 10 for the Chairman. We don't know what they are yet, but anyway. Uh, for $10, you can also buy the Origin Racing Suit. So if something like that, if you're wanting to be a racer and you've got the Origin 350R, I think you might as well get that, because you might as well be fully kitted out, haven't you? Anyway, that's it. Right, so that's it for Star Citizen Sunday. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button if you did. Comment if you've got anything you want to say, anything, any comments you want to say about the video, about Star Citizen, anything at all. Subscribe for more. I am currently working on the system guide, which will be coming up hopefully next week. Uh, and on a final note, I just want to thank everyone who has subscribed, all the previous subscribers, all you new subscribers, all the lovely comments you've given me. I really appreciate it, and I shall hopefully keep up the good work. Join me again next week for Star Citizen Sunday.